Every day brings new information and more changes, so we want to keep working to give you the best information as you make decisions for you and your family. That is how we help spread facts to help alleviate the fear. Part of that is bringing in trusted health professionals. We're so glad to have NBC medical correspondent Dr. John Torres with us today from New York City. Dr. John, there was a time you and I used to sit next to each other back in the day in another city. I know there might be a little bit of delay <laughs> because of technology here, but we're really glad to have you today. I wanted to start with the idea of ventilators. I saw the president tweet out he wants car manufacturers to hurry up and make ventilators. We're, we're hearing that um, some medical professionals are talking about sharing ventilators or doubling up patients on ventilators. Is that possible? Is that sustainable? And Cheryl, you're exactly right. And to answer the two questions, yes, it is possible as far as sustainable. For a short term period, it might work. And what's happening is, Coronavirus patients, this is a respiratory illness, so their lungs get affected, they get put on ventilators. Unfortunately, they're on ventilators for weeks on end, so they're occupying that one, and there's not a whole lot of surplus of ventilators to begin with. And so if more patients show up, that's gonna create a shortage. We're not quite there yet, but a lot of hospitals, including here in New York City, are looking at what happens if we get to that point, can we share ventilators? Here in New York, they're trialing, sharing two ventilators. A doctor in Michigan showed how to do four ventilators. The problem is it's very short term. The patients have to be matched exactly as far as lung volume, breathing rate. If one recovers faster than the other one, it won't work. So again, it's a short term solution. It was used in the Las Vegas shootings until they got enough ventilators in place but it's not something that's gonna be long-term and hopefully if we flatten that curve, we're not gonna get people rushing to these ventilators all at once and having to need them all at the same time and we'll have more time to, to separate them out and get people on ventilators without having to share them. Yeah, as we hear your explanation, it can give people incentive to keep making those personal decisions to flatten the curve that you're talking about. So we can expect in densely populated cities like New York City, even Metro Atlanta, where we have the highest number of cases, that the cases would be higher, they would spread more quickly. But we also have some clusters here, Dr. John, in Georgia, in smaller rural communities. Those are not immune to a faster spread either. That is a misconception that's out there. Absolutely correct, Cheryl. Small communities are not exempt. It might be a little slower getting there. Like you said, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, New Orleans, these are big cities where you tend to be around a lot of people. And so the, the virus can pass very quickly from person to person, but it's going to get to those rural communities. It's just going to get a lot slower. So they need to practice the exact same things, the social distancing, washing their hands, not touching their face, those things we know works. And the main thing to re remember, if you live in one of these small communities, it's not that coronavirus is not going to get there. It's either already there or it's on its way to get there. All right, Dr. John, thanks for the time and for your expertise. We really appreciate it.